بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده قد قال تبارك وتعالى في كلامه المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها شروا كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم رب زدني علما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي عملي وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سيدتنا خديجة رضي الله تعالى عنها I mentioned that prior to the prophethood and nubuwa of the Messenger وسلم, there were some strange things that started to happen in the life of the Prophet وسلم, and despite how abnormal those things were of trees and stones saying assalamu alaikum ya rasulullah of dreams that would come about like the light of day in which there is no doubt so what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw that was then manifested in real life and all these things upon which khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha would constantly remind the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that his characteristics and his qualities were such that they were not those to be disregarded by Rabb Azza wa Jal. Also, and which is the climax of this immense trust and that Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha had on the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and complete belief in the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the magnanimous occasion of the first revelation to the Messenger And in reality, this occasion is where Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha shows just how dedicated she was to the Messenger وسلم, and her unwavering nature in respect to the statements of the Messenger so, from the practices of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prior to prophethood was spending time in solitude where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would spend at times multiple days away from the rest of society away from his uh, daily life and he would stay secluded in the mountainous region simply to contemplate upon Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal and he would de- do this particularly in the mount one of the mounts known as Mount Hira and this is walking distance for the nomads and for the Arabs it was um, that they, the Prophet وسلم, used to make the journey to Mount Hira he would take some provisions with him and on occasion his wife Khadija al-Kubra radiyallahu ta'ala anha would bring some provisions whilst he was there and he would simply spend time in solitude um, in the books of Tafsir it mentions that approximately six months of this seeing a dream and it coming to manifest passes by and the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak Ramadan and though the Islamic months had not been commenced in terms of the Sharia because the Prophet ﷺ was still to have received his prophethood the Prophet ﷺ refers and in the books of Tafsir it tells us that in calculation this month according to Hisab was the month of Ramadan and the Prophet ﷺ, he ascends the Mount Hira to spend some time in solitude and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one true Rabb. 
and Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha prepares his provisions for him in terms of food and water etc and after spending a few nights from the month of Ramadan in this cave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is seated in this mount in this little cave in the mount of Hira consumed by his alayhi salatu wasalam's thoughts when just like he used to see before a light a radiant light manifests in front of him and this was towards the heavens fi ufiq sama towards the heavens and coming from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so from the direction of the kaabatullah if anybody has been to mount hira and we should try and uh, uh, if we perform our umrah our hajj allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors and the means for us to once again return to the blessed lands then attempt and make make that point of going to the mount of hira for no other reason except to understand that how the Prophet وسلم, how the Sahaba Kiram used to live. What was their life like? And how the Prophet وسلم, imagine the Prophet وسلم, at this age of forty with is when when the Prophet وسلم, received Nubu at the age of forty, his wife Khadija al Kubra anha was much senior to the Prophet. وسلم, years older than the Prophet. وسلم. According to some traditions, 15 years older. At that age, she at times would bring the provisions from the residence of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala, her own residence, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa whilst he was in seclusion in the Mount of Hira. So what type of life they used to live, how the Prophet would ascend this mount and then spend days there, days on end in the comp- contemplation. And, and this Again, is a lost practice of spending time in san- solitude in the remembrance of Rabb Azza wa Jal. The Mashaykh, they mention that one should make it a habit that turn yourself off from the rest of humanity for a few moments in the day. Whether it's locking, not literally, but closing the door and sitting in a room, whether it's going to a specific area in the house, whether it's in solitude in the masjids, whatever it may be. But spend moments in the day in solitude where there is no one there, no other hindrance, leave your phone, leave all your means of communication away from you, and just spend some time in the remembrance of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. This was a noble practice of the Messenger of before prophethood. And continued after prophethood. And so, I was mentioning that inshallah, once, if we have been, then you would have noticed that when you reach the peak of the mountain, just before you enter the cave, if you look in that direction that the cave is facing, when you reach it, then you can sort of see towards the Kaabatullah, in the direction of the Kaaba. And so the Prophet ﷺ sees this light manifest from that direction. But unlike in the past where the light would manifest and then disappear, on this occasion it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And it seems to be coming closer. It comes closer to the Messenger. And in the middle of that radiant light, a point comes where the Prophet sees Sayyiduna Jibreel, the Archangel of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. And Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam manifests himself in the form of a human. And the rest of the story is that Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam then goes through the process of the revelation, Iqra, ma'ana biqari. That isn't the objective today, so I'm going to pass through that. What happens when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is overcome with astonishment? Bewilderment that what has just happened, he returns back to his wife, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala. Anha. This rock in his life, this person that had complete trust in the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he comes and he relates this incident, this, this, this occasion that has just taken place. And he relates verbatim what happened, that I was sat in the cave, a light drew nearer to me, this angel, this person, Jibreel, Manifests in, in the form of a man 
extols me to read I wasn't able to read He presses me And then he re- reveals to me That I am the messenger of Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal Ibn Hajar Hafiz Ibn Hajar Askarani Rahimahullah He says Saddaqathu fi awwali wahlatin That imagine the, the situation And how for others Far-fetched this may have been But she Radiallahu ta'ala anha accepts completely this message and this occasion without any any thought whatsoever ومن ثباتها في الأمر ما يدل على قوة يقينها and her steadfastness in terms of this matter just shows how much she believed in the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم now after this happens this is where the true Bond of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to light And she relates a reason why This incident has to be from Allah And this is what I want the listeners to concentrate on She lists some qualities that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam possess And she says that these qualities They testify that you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are some, Is someone who is on good and your Rabb cannot destroy the immense good that comes from you because anyone who possesses these types of qualities can only be on the truth. And so in this incident, when we look at these qualities, the intention should be that I from this moment on will try to embody these same characteristics of the Messenger them. Upon which Khadija radiallahu ta'ala says that these are the reasons why this incident shows that you are divinely sent by Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So these qualities have huge importance. What are they? So I'm going to list the qualities, conclude with that, and we're going to explore the qualities somewhat further in the next lesson that we have on Tuesday, inshaAllah. إِنَّكَ لَتَسِرُ rahim. وتحمل الكل وتكسب المعدوم وتقرئ الضيف وتعين على نوائب الحق وفي رواية البخاري وتصدق الحديث وتؤدي الأمانة The hadith mentions that she lists the following qualities Number one إنك لتصل الرحم Indeed you enjoin the relations that Allah has made binding by blood Number two وتحمل الكل that you assist the vulnerable and the weak in society. وَتَكْسِبْ الْمَعْدُومِ That those who don't have, you help to provide for them. And to the point that you give them preference over your own self. وَتُكْرِئُ الضَّيْفِ That you honor and host those who are visiting, the, the, the musafir, the traveler. وَتُعِينُ عَلَى نَوَائِبِ الْحَقِّ And you assist upon the matters of haq and truth. So those matters in society that are undeniably something that society should fight for, you are at the forefront for those rights. And in the riwayat of Bukhari, وَتَسْتُقُ الْحَدِيثِ That you speak the truth. وَتُؤَدِّ amana, And any trust that is entrusted to you, you fulfill those trusts. So these qualities, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala says that they are in you and because they are in you, this is the sign. These qualities are a sign of a person who has been perfectly molded. And thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not waste these qualities of yours. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, we will have a brief discussion on these qualities and what they mean and how to try and embody them ourselves in our own lives to become possessors to become those who possess these qualities of the messenger Allah grant us all the tawfiq Allah grant us the ability uh, well, inshallah tomorrow is Juma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everybody a blessed uh, Juma. make it fruitful for us spend as much time as we can in sending salutations on the noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is his emphasized practice on this day also, the 
the listeners are reminded to recite Surah Al-Kahf uh, at least the first 10, the last 10 and if inshallah we are able the entirety of Surah Al-Kahf on Friday which is also mentioned to us by the Messenger of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen subhanallahi wa bihamdi subhanakallahum wa bihamdik wa nashadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruhu wa natubu ilayk jazakumullah khaira assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh